When the meteorite that ended the reign of the dinosaurs crashed into the Earth, the chaos that it created, though tremendous in scale, was nothing new. And that's the honest truth. This has happened and will continue to happen time and time again. And in today's video, we're going back in time to 360 million years ago, to the boundary of the Devonian extinction, to take a look at what must have been a truly cataclysmic event that possibly caused the extinction to begin with. The Devonian is often referred to as the Age of Fishes. Massive evolutionary strides were taken, and life was really ramping up its dominance of the Earth at this time, with the first plants beginning to spread across dry land during the Devonian, forming the first forests the Earth had ever seen. And by the end of it, plants had progressed from releasing spores to becoming the first seed-bearing plants, but then almost all of it got noped out of existence, rapidly. And in this video, we're going to take a look at why. The Woodley Crater is a name you've probably heard of if you're a nerd like me and you love researching about ancient events that more or less decimated the globe in a matter of seconds. But this crater isn't even exposed, and as a result of this, estimates of its size are conservative at best. Some state the event might have left a crater 120 kilometers in diameter, and recent studies have provided an even larger estimate predicting the crater could have been as large as 160 kilometers in diameter. The largest estimate, if correct, would make this the fourth largest confirmed bolide impact structure in the world, and would suggest the rock that crashed into Earth was about five to six kilometers in diameter. So if this crater wasn't even visible, then how do we know it exists? Good question. You know how it goes. Human wants resources, human drills for resources, human makes discovery. In the 1970s, this structure was first intercepted, but with the limited knowledge back then, it was only realized in 1997 during a gravity study. And you can see why. I mean, look at this. It sticks out like a sore thumb. After this gravity study, a second drill core sample was taken, and it was evident from the thin veins of shocked quartz, breccia, and melted glass that the sample was composed of that it came from something that created a level of pressure 100,000 times greater than the atmospheric pressure at sea level, or up to 100 times greater than those generated by earthquakes or volcanic activity, meaning only a large impact event could have generated the conditions necessary to create this. This was further supported by the discovery of an extremely rare mineral called radite, which was found in a drill core sample, which was taken from the central uplift zone, so what happened when this enormous chunk of rock hit the Earth? Well, bad things. Even though the impact occurred in the extremely ancient land of Western Australia, the part that it landed in was unfortunately a shallow sea, meaning tremendous mega tsunamis were generated that would have traveled outwards in all directions, slamming into every coastline within the direct firing line before inundating vast swaths of land as it poured inland ever more. And along with this, pronounced volcanism would have been triggered en masse when contact was made, as a result of the shockwaves that were produced. These shockwaves travel tremendous distances, especially when a bolide this large strikes the Earth. So it's likely that this event, or it combined with the many other disasters that it created, might have been the catalyst to the series of pulsated extinctions that occurred in the late Devonian, possibly as a result of it triggering volcanism from supervolcanoes to starting brand new flood basaltic eruptions. And a flood basalt event did indeed occur around the time that this impacted. The ocean ecosystem relies on phytoplankton, which obtain their food primarily through photosynthesis. Like land plants, phytoplankton have chlorophyll to capture sunlight, and they use photosynthesis to turn it into chemical energy. So when events like this occur, you can bet the sun is going to be shrouded for an uncertain amount of time until things finally begin to settle and stabilize to some extent. This isn't only because of the impact though, it's also because of the volcanic eruptions that it triggered, almost certainly leading to volcanic winters, alongside the already terrible event that has occurred, which in itself shrouded the earth as well as a result of the ash cloud formed by the vaporized material, which spread out in all directions. And the combination of the two would have shrouded the planet, possibly ushering in the period of glaciation known as the Fermanian glaciation event. So when this bolide made contact, the first thing that happened 
was everything in the immediate radius of it was vaporized in an instant. Beyond that, the shockwave rippled through everything in its path as it expanded outwards in an ever-growing concentric movement, traveling unbelievably vast distances, propelling everything that it made contact with and causing untold destruction. Entire forests were destroyed, mowed down like they were little more than flimsy sticks. In the actual epicenter, the asteroid sinks deep into the earth like a hot knife through butter, sinking kilometers into the earth. The solid ground that the asteroid hits gets melted into a hot plasma, losing the ability to be solid for a brief period of time before it finally rebounded, forming this protrusion that we can see on the gravity map. The very same looking protrusion that was also witnessed in the video that we made on South Australia's Ackerman Impact Crater. The link to that video is in the description. Material is blasted out into space, where much of it falls back to the Earth as superheated material, sparking forest fires all over the globe, and heating the atmosphere to such an extent that heat shock occurs, which scorch the entire Earth. Some material remained in space, where it then orbited the Earth and periodically crashed back down into it, only serving to further extend the destruction for many years beyond this event. So you can see why this extinction event was so pronounced. The brief cessation of the ability to photosynthesize sunlight led to the mass die-out of plankton, causing the entire food chain to collapse, and thus the mass die-off and extinction of many species occurred. Along with everything that's been mentioned, these events are also suspected to trigger flood basaltic eruptions, which is an abnormal upwelling of tremendous amounts of fluidic basaltic magma that pours readily out of the earth and lasts for vast periods of time without any real cessation. Events such as the Siberian Traps lasted up to 2 million years, and around the time of this impact, something known as the Hangenberg event occurred. I believe this to be of flood basaltic origin, but many theories have been made. To me, when combined with the Woodley impact and the short glaciation that occurred, these events are the most logical series that tie in neatly with one another, but I could be wrong. I think bolide impacts like this really serve to show us how dangerous it is to not take these kinds of events seriously. If something like this happens today, I honestly can't even fathom what would occur. All that I know is that this is going to happen again, and when it does, I can only pray that we're prepared to deal with it before it makes contact with this beautiful planet. Or else we'll be joining the dinosaurs in the annals of history. Thanks for watching.